Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron in the Battlelytics Lab with another exciting review. Uh, but tonight I got something I don't really do a lot. It is a Clan Light Mech. I've got the Fire Falcon, guys, the Fire Falcon. So this is the, um, the deconfiguration and uh, it's a pretty neat one. And the reason I picked this particular mech, number one, it was voted on by the patrons uh, as a mech they wanted to see, but I, I was the one that picked the deconfiguration because it's actually pretty cheap. It's in the 800s in terms of battle value, uh, which is you know low cost for a clan mech in general. Uh, and it's got pretty decent weaponry, a couple of SRM-4s, ER medium. Uh, it's got a narc beacon on it too, so, and tag, which, you know, if, if you do that, which is a whole other conversation, and I have this all the time. I thought clans thought artillery was, you know, dishonorable, so I don't know why their mechs have tag, but I don't know. Leave it in the comments and educate me. Um, anyway, so this mech was built in 3052 as a uh, an alleged replacement for the Mistlinks, which I would replace the Mistlinks too. I don't know why it took them this long. The Mistlinks has like one pip of armor for the entire mech. Uh, just like a walking head. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you look at the thing, it falls apart. The Fire Falcon has a little bit more armor, uh, so I'm excited to see how this one holds up. So guys, all the excitement is coming your way. Don't go anywhere. All right, guys, here we are, uh, Fire Falcon D. As I had said, so this thing is only 826 battle value. It's a 25 ton clan light mech. It's an Omni mech. Um, it moves like a locust, 812, no jump, uh, and it can dissipate 20. It's got 10 double heat sinks, pretty standard. Does have an XL fusion engine, does have endo steel, does have ferro fiber, so it's got all the goodies there. Um, and it's got four tons of armor, so 85.4% coverage. That's that's respectable for a 25-ton mech. Um, that's a total of 76 pips of armor. Um, now, what's great about this thing, again, it's got the ER medium laser on the left arm, no lower arm actuator, so 360-degree arc of fire. Um, and it's got that narc beacon on the right arm, same deal. It can just spin that thing and fire 360 degrees. So if you want to be a jerk and narc somebody as you're running away at 120 kilometers an hour, you can uh, you can do that. Uh, it does have twin SRM-4s in the left torso. Uh, those do have narc-capable or narc-friendly uh, ammo, if you will. Um, so the thing can do some decent damage uh, with those SRMs, you know, once it gets close and it, and it hits with a narc. Um, so let's take a look at uh, the offensive benchmarks and we'll see, you know, exactly what this thing can do. Offensive benchmarks, uh, we've got 81.8 points of damage across the board. Can't build up any heat, can't optimize this thing. Uh, it's just got a, it's got a small payload, right? And uh, 20 heat sinks is basically your, uh, your minimum number of heat sinks for any given clan mech as everything has double heat sinks. So 81.8, is it sufficient? Is it not? I don't know. Let's take a look at how it did on the Javelin. Not great. 15% uh, of the time it killed the Javelin. The, the time to kill is is awful. Um, and, you know, damage per hit, about on par. Three crits, crits per, um, you know, average criticals, right? 3.47. So it just, it just doesn't really do a lot of damage. The twin SRM-4s, are shotguns, obviously, um, and but the ER medium, I mean that that does decent damage. Clan ER mediums are lethal, uh, and you know they shoot as far as a inner sphere standard large laser. So you're getting you know 15, um, you know 15 hexes, 15 inches of range out of that ER medium. I was surprised it didn't do more, uh, but I guess again it's just spraying too much damage on that fast moving javelin. To really land kills. So the moral of the story here is, you know, don't think that this thing is going to kill anything toe to toe. This is a this is a harasser through and through. Um, this needs to be um, supporting something like an adder, right? Where the adder is running around, you know, busting things up with those ERPPCs, you know, and this nerd's running in, you know, and spraying it with with SRM force. And if you got a couple of missile mechs in your light star. Even better because you know you can drop a narc on this thing um, and it's serving double duty, which is great. 
All right. Um, one final note on the narc. So clan narcs, um, their range, if I'm not mistaken, is 12. Um, the SRMs here uh, for the clan are nine uh, at long range. So you can actually make those narc attempts um, a couple of times before you know, you're even in, in range. I mean, assuming, you know, you're, you're sort of strafing and you're not running straight in on the target, um, you know, you might have one or two chances to narc the target before your SRMs um, are in range, which is kind of neat. So anyway, let's take a look at the defensive benchmarks. I don't have high hopes as it is, you know, it's still light, it's still paper thin armor, but let's see how it does. Uh, and, you know, I'm interested to see again how it stacks up to that miss links as it was intended to replace it. So defense, here we come. All right, so here we are looking at the defensive uh, <laughs> defensive benchmarks here. So armor diagnostic, it's okay. A little under on the rear, uh, pretty good all around though. I mean, it's pretty much how I would set up this mech, I think. Um, mobility analysis is interesting. This thing takes a leg actuator hit, almost one in five shots. Um, it's got very weakly armored legs. And you can see by the end of the game, this thing is like hobbling around, right? 1.8. If it makes it all the way to the end of the game, I mean, this thing is, is banged up and hobbling around. Um, the average target mod, though, is 3.5. Uh, now, that factors in, of course, um, the average if you die, right? It's, it's just looking at, you know, what's the average for, for a given game over those 10,000 games that it simulates. <laughs> Survivability curve. Let's look at the middle. So you feel real good about life until about turn seven. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I guess turn eight, turn, yeah, turn seven, turn eight, and then it just plummets, right? Your survivability goes in the toilet. So what does that tell me? It tells me it could take a few shots, right? It can get hit, um, but as it gets closer, right, it's, you know, the, the, the benefit of having that high target mod, um, you know, from its speed is offset, um, you know, by closer range. And the, you know, the, the targeting mule, the, the awesome in this case, is able to land those hits. And when it starts taking fire, it starts melting, right? When it starts taking more fire, I should say, it starts melting. However, a survivability of 34.4% for a 25-ton mech isn't bad. Um, by comparison, uh, the missed links was about 10% worse than that. Um, so this thing is definitely more survivable um, and does more damage uh, than the Miss Links. Um, and actually, you know, it's interesting. I'm going to go back. So battle value, the Miss Links is 871. Um, so offensive benchmarks, looking at the looking at the Miss Links Prime, the Miss Links Prime does about the same, 84.7 damage. So uh, this one survives more by about 9 to 10% does a couple points less of damage. I, I think I would pick this one over the miss links. Um, but that's defensive. I don't know what else I can say here except for, you know, for a light mech, again, not bad. Let's take a look at the efficiency and see where it shakes out. Efficiency analysis is interesting here. So the one thing that you see immediately, or at least that I pick out, is the damage loss, 37.9%. That's really, really high. Um, and that's because it's got twin SRM4s. It needs to be close to deal damage. And as soon as you get close, this thing gets gets knocked out, right? Um, and so I think there is a correlation between a really silly payload um, and, you know, just the, the overall profile, the speed, the armor, et cetera, of, of the mech's design. Like, I, I would put two LRM5s on this mech, right? Or, or something along those lines. And actually, you know, in looking at the miss links, that thing has a streak four and an LRM 10. And I think that's why damage wise, the miss links does slightly more. If this thing had, you know, twin LRMs in the ER medium, I think you'd see much better return on this Mac. Um, still efficiency as 4.4. For a 25 ton Mac, that's actually really good. Um, the, the miss links is a 4.25. So this edges it out very, very slightly. In terms of gunnery sensitivity, it's pretty flat, you know, 0.5. You're going to see a little bit of gain. Um, I, I would seriously just play this thing at, at gunnery 3. I would not invest the points in gunnery 2. Of course, because it does cost, um, you know, 820 or whatever it costs, was I say 826, um, the percent increase to go from 3 to 2 is not going to be a ton of points. 
but I don't think you're going to see a return on investment if you go from three to two. Um, you know, I think you could spend those points better on a higher efficiency mech in your star. Um, you know, again, just going back to the design of this mech, this is not a mech you really want to get in a pitched battle um, with anything other than mechs in its size class, right? You know, you're you're looking at locusts and wasps and stingers, right? Commandos, things along those. I mean, even a commando I would probably run away from. Um, but, you know, it's tough. Again, the SRM-4s are something you want to use, but it has the speed to run down those 6.9 Inner Sphere light bug mechs um, and just crush them. But if you think that this mech is going to go up against bigger mechs, um, you know, it, it's not going to hold up. Conversely, if you're up against a Fire Falcon, you know, and it does get close enough to narc you, it behooves you to just cook it um, because it won't take you long, you know, to cripple it. You're either knocking off an arm, uh, in which case, you know, you're destroying the narc or you're destroying a laser, which, I mean, to me, the narc and the ER medium are probably the most important things on this mech. Um, or you're crippling it, you know, by taking out a leg or hitting it in the torso or something along those lines. You know, try to land those hits on this thing if it gets close enough to engage at, you know, in those shorter range brackets. All right, let's take a look at the threat analysis. All right, so I struggled a little bit with the, the roles for this thing. I came up with two, uh, one brawler, two skirmisher. I think you can brawl with this mech if uh, it's going up against other light mechs. And if, uh, you know, you can somehow, if you're like, you know, city urban terrain and you can dart from building to building and you can make use of cover, um, you know, you can narc, uh, you know, you can use again that 360 degree um, arc to, you know, to, to sort of hit something. But again, like, I'm so scared, like look, <laughs> looking at the survivability um, and the damage loss, I would be very scared to brawl with this mech unless you're up against other light mechs um, that, that really don't have heavy damage payloads. The other role that I would play this thing in is a skirmisher role. I would not get closer than like eight or nine inches. Um, I would keep this thing out at that range. Um, I would be using my NARC. I would be using my ER medium laser primarily. Um, and then if you're feeling bold, maybe you get in somebody's rear arc or they're engaged with other targets, you know, you can kind of sneak into, you know, the long range for those SRM-4s, get an arc on there if it's not on already, you know, drop some missiles in and then get out. I think you have to be really, really careful. Like with all clan mechs, right? This is, um, it's not even a glass cannon. It's just like, it's like a glass dart gun. Um, and it is what it is, right? I mean, that's what you get, but it's 25 tons. So, you know, let's, let's keep that, you know, in mind. So your alpha strike capability is 23 points. That is if everything lands. Um, now, if the NARC beacon hits, all right, and that's all sort of factored into these numbers, you know, obviously that's gonna drive up the number of SRM-4 missiles that are able to land. So, you know, your peak average calculated damage is 16.2. So that means that out of that 23 points, you can expect 16.2 of it to land. So that's a 70% ACD cap number. That's not bad. Um, and typically, as, as you see mechs with a, with a higher um, number of missiles than direct fire weapons, right, variable damage versus direct fire, um, you know, you'll see that ACD cap drop. Um, so I'm not surprised by that, you know, especially with twin SRM-4s. So I think ultimately, Fire Falcon, uh, it's a cool mech. I love the new design if you haven't seen it. Um, it's a light hunter, in my opinion, or it's a, it's a, it's a light engager. Um, I don't think that it's the kind of mech that like you can run into an assault lance and pop a narc on him and run away. I mean, you'll be dead before you get out of range for sure. Um, I think that this is definitely a mech that you engage inner sphere lights, inner sphere mediums or other clan lights. Um, and, you know, again, you, you want to pair it with things that are scary. You know, I'm thinking about adders, one of my favorite mechs, you know, novas, things like that. Um, it's very fast, which definitely benefits it. You know, if you're playing objective cap type games, you know, like if you play the DFA missions, like an intercept mission, I think this thing could be very valuable for that. Um, again, I still don't understand the value of tag. Somebody please tell me why clan mechs have tag. I don't, <laughs> I thought the clans didn't use artillery very much except for, I mean, I guess if you got like the, the Naga or whatever, right, that thing's got what, twin arrow fives or arrow fours rather. Um, you know, so I, maybe that's what it's for, but 
I don't know. You tell me. So, guys, that's it. I'm done. Do me a favor. Check out Aries Games and Minis. Got the dice. Got the, the books, the minis, all the good stuff that you want. Um, subscribe. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Let me know. Definitely let me know about the tag. I'm, I'm scratching my head. Um, and if you want to get more involved, you can head on over to Patreon. Uh, as little a dollar a month, you know, you can help out the channel. Uh, really good stuff. And uh, shows us that you love us, which, of course, you know, our feelings are important. If you have learned nothing uh, in 2021 and 2022, feelings matter, guys. Um, and on that note, I love the Fire Falcon. I think it's a great mech. Uh, and I don't want to hurt its feelings. But left me left me a little bit, uh, left a little bit desired, I'll be honest. Again, LRMs. If if you play, uh, you know, and you you play with your with your gaming group that you're allowed to mod max, I would I would scrap those SRM fours. I would drop that tag, and I would put some meaty meaty LRMs. Maybe some, you know, maybe some Artemis guided ones and drop the narc. I don't know. I'm getting crazy now, but that's the Fire Falcon. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review, and of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death from Above Wargaming. Have a good night. Thank <laughs> you.